Hi, everybody. I'm Laudo. We are to present confounding in the two end series and are happy listening. Well, this is the sixth the series of my videos on the design of experiment. Confounding in a two end series and R is the topic of the present presentation. And I'm claiming that irrespective of the version of R you are running, the reusable code I am, I'll be presenting here will run. My assumption is that you are fully aware of the two end series and you know a lot about confounding. Well, that's the case then. My task is to provide you with our reusable codes that will automate the statistical analysis. The reference material remains Cochrane and Cox, 1957. Now, confounding in the two end series, I wish to start by discussing that briefly before we, I go to discuss, I mean, uh, implement the codes. All right. If a replicate is to be divided into two blocks, in most cases of this picture, we would confound the IS interaction the one that is sometimes referred to as the defining contrast in the factorial experiment. Suppose that each incomplete block is to be divided, further divided into two so that we, there will be four blocks, one, two, three, four, in a replicate. Having chosen one factorial effect to represent the comparison this, we may easily verify that any other factorial effect may be made to represent the comparison that. Okay, well, so in all, to arrange two n factorial in blocks of two n minus two units, we may confound any two factorial effects that we choose. The remaining block comparison, this represents the third factorial effect, which is also confounded with blocks. The general rule therefore states thus, that if there are Suppose that a replicate, suppose a replicate in two n factorial is to be divided into blocks of two n minus k units, so that there are there will be two k blocks in the replicate. Then we may select any k factorial effect to be confounded, subject only to the restriction that none of these must be a generalized interaction of any group of the others. Further, two k I mean, two by k minus k minus one effects are automatically confounded. These are all the effects which can be expressed as generalized interaction of the group of effects selected for confounding. Well, the one I started with will be arrived that if we make n to be four, for instance, and k to be two, then this will be two raised to the power four, 16. All right. And this will be two raised to power two, which is four. You know, we had four blocks. Okay. And automatically one, because two raised to power two is four minus two, that's two. Two minus one, one. One effect is confounded. All right. Information on the data. The data was obtained at Rotan State Experimental Station years ago on field experiment on beans. It is a two to power factor, uh, four factorial confided in blocks of eight units. The factors were dung. Well, like I said, since they are in two levels, two to power four in the two N series. So none means absent. And whenever it is present, it is present in 10 tons per acre. Nitro chalk, absent. And whenever it's present, it's 0 0.4 cubic weight nitrogen per acre. Superphosphate, none. And when it is present, 0 0.6 cubic weight P2O5 per acre. Murate of potash, none. 
and when it's present, one cubic width potash per acre. The effect total, BMPK, which you will express to in the algebra, D minus one, N minus one, P minus one, K minus one. That is the content of block of block A minus content of block B in the data. You will soon see that in either of the replicates. Now, if I express, if I do this expansion, if I carry out this expansion, it will give me the main effect and the numerous interactions that are possible in DMPK. Now, some of them will carry the positive sign. The other half will carry the negative sign. Now, let's go to the data now. Those that will carry the positive sign are kept in here, blocking. You will notice that the content of block A in rep one is also the content of block A in block uh, rep two. I mean, MPK, MPK, D, D, K, K, then P here, yeah, P there. So these are the positive flank, actually of D and PK, which is defining the defining contrast, and these are the negative part. So it's this part added together minus this part added together. And that is confounding blocks. It's confounding blocks. Either in replicate one or replicate two. Well, manual computation. Well, the manual computation here is interestingly long. I mean, if you have to do this manually, then it should be this clumsy. And we are talking of two raised to power four. Imagine what the case would have been if it had been two raised to power eight or more. You will be joining papers because you will want to get the main effect, total effect for D and all the interactions and the main effects. You want to get there total effects. And that will be very, very clumsy. However, this is still manageable. Two raised to the power four experiment is still manageable. And this is the uh, manual calculation, manual competition I got from it. But there are some things of note in here. Blocks in rep. We said the degree of freedom is two. And that is 123.2. That is not quite right. But this is what, this is just giving you a variety. If we go by blocks, it will be this. But we saw that the block is confounded with the DMPK, which is the defining contrast. It is confounded with DMPK. So this is what a human being will do. But obviously, R will not do this. R will put the fact that DMPK is confounded in blocks in the output. The fact that we have blocks in rep to be to have degrees of it, or degrees of freedom two will affect the error degrees of freedom. Because if we as if we know and implement the fact that that DMPK is confounded, then this also have been one. And the error, the degrees of freedom, freedom ought to have been 15. And again, the excess or shortage from here would affect the excess for error. Let's now see what R has for us concerning this. Well, with respect to decoding, if you feed R from here, to here, it is ready for you. And you cannot tell it to do the ANOVA. And you can have the summary of the ANOVA here presented. Actually, this is not the entire thing. That's why I have this ellipsis here to tell you that you get something more than this. But I want us to pay attention to the analysis of variance, that's why I'm putting it under focus. 
so that I will be able to look at it very well. That's why I said the output is actually more than what is shown here. I choose to highlight the analysis of variance alone so that it can be legible enough for discussion. The block access is the same as that of the defining contrast, DMPK, because it has been confounded with blocks. This situation has loaded the residual SS somewhat. The statistical significance on N and P are noticed. Okay, look at it now. You remember in the hand calculation, we had two for degrees of freedom. And we had one, two, three, point one, instead of 78.1. I said instead of 78.1 because the experiment is confounded. The defining contrast is confounded with blocks. And Aaron knows that, and he gives the SS for DMPK. I said this is SS for DMPK because, for instance, if I go back to the AMP computation, DMPK, its total main effect is 50. And you remember what we said about the total effect. We said we will square it. I mean, talking about the last uh, video, we said we'll square it and divide it by 2n times r. Well, n in this case is 4. Now, 2 raised to power n is 16. Then r, r in this case is 2, 2 replicates. So 16 times 2 is 32. So if you square 50, that will be 2,500 divided by 32. Use your calculator very well. I am claiming that it will be equal to 78.1. So R is here telling you that DMPK is confounded with blocks. Further on that, you will notice that DMPK is not listed. Just like even in the and calculation, DMPK is not listed. But this is giving you the blocks effect directly. Why? This is implementing the fact that DMPK is confounded with blocks. All right. I, like I told you, the sum of squares for error will be partially loaded because the SS from here will come to the residual. And again, the degree of freedom for residual has now become 15. Otherwise, any other thing is the same. Again, for the replication, there are two of them. But if you work it out, you get this. Let me use D, the main effect D to illustrate because of the easy computation with it. If you look at the total effect for D, it is minus eight. If you square minus eight, it is 64. If you say 64 divided by 32, it will give you two. And look at it here. See sum of squares of D is two. And the mean square is also is two. That goes for all other mean effects, two level interactions and three level interactions. Obviously, the fourth level, I mean the four level interactions, which is the only one is confounded with blocks. And that's the way it stands. Okay. This is the fathers I intend to go on confounding in the twin series and uh, watch out for the combination of another design or technique next time. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. Thank you. See you.